What's up YouTube? Jay Traveling here. So today I'm gonna try and finish this PC up. So all I have left to do is I need to update the BIOS in it. And then we're gonna take the panel off and replace the CPU. So shouldn't be too hard. So what I'm just gonna do is boot it up. We're gonna boot into the BIOS so it's ASUS. So I'm just gonna keep hitting delete until we get into it. And I do have to turn the monitor on still. But I should be into the buyers. The keyboard lit up, so it should have booted into the buyers by now. Yep, so we're in it. And what we're going to do is, you can see it's a 6402P uh, with 16 gigs of RAM. I do have the XMP profile enabled for them, so it's getting a 2400 megahertz of RAM. Uh, but what we're going to do is come into here. I click on tool. And you have the easy flash utility. So you should just be able to do it via the internet. Click that. Click next. I'm already plugged in. So it should pretty much do it on its own, but they always give you some message. Uh, so we're going to click yes. And it's pretty much going to do what it needs to do so now we're in the internet utility so we're just going to download the 3805 zip so it'll sit there it'll download it and then we'll install it just via over the internet in the bios and then that should so here's another download successful do you really want to update bios yes i do want to update the bios do not shut down or reset the system while updating the BIOS, if you do, uh, you know, lose power while updating the BIOS or shut the computer down, you could uh, brick your motherboard. So take caution with that. So the progress it'll have down bottom. So we'll wait for this to just go through and do its thing. So it's cruising right along. We got it updated. It's still processing. We still don't want to touch anything, even though that one bar went through. I want to wait for that to do whatever it's doing right now as far as updating and installing the, the uh, BIOS. So when we do finish it and it reboots, I'll reboot back in here. We can always check the, the BIOS, but I'm pretty sure it'll be updated. While it's doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my side glass off with just these screws. There's two of them. There's this one. They don't come fully out because I'm going to have to lay the computer down after I get the glass out and it just like on this case folds out a little bit and then you just pick it up just like that and we'll put it off to the side over here and I'll just lean it this way. I don't want to lean it up against this stuff because it'll, it'll scratch the glass. It's still processing, so I want to let it keep doing that. But we have access inside the case now where we'll be taking this fan off and taking the CPU out. And then we're going to be replacing it with, and I showed this in the actual build video. We have a 7600K that once this is updated, uh, it should be able to accept this chip. So I did get the message that it successfully updated and now it's rebooting and it rebooted itself just so you know and that it's all turning back on but I'm gonna go right back into the BIOS so once it boots back up we'll, we'll see it shouldn't have the ACES logo in a second it might boot we'll go back into it So, we got our post screen. F1. Back on our BIOS. So, BIOS 3805. So, we got our BIOS up to date. Exit easy flash. Check. 
our easy tune so our this got disabled so i'm going to re-enable it so that that's our ram and then i'm going to save and exit and now we should be booting in the windows so windows is booting up so we're all successful with our bios update pretty simple process on these newer motherboards uh the one thing i do want to check because I didn't see the one terabyte hard disk drive in the BIOS. So I want to check and make sure that's in. If it's not for some reason, oh, it's there. So if it wasn't, I would have to reformat it to figure out why it wasn't in there. So I'm going to shut this back down. Now that our BIOS is up to date, I'm going to shut it down. And what we're going to do is I'm going to lay it down on its side and I'm going to replace all this. So what I'll do is kill the power to it. Uh, you don't want power draw to it at all. And all you really need to do is flip the switch in the back, but I'll actually unplug the power source from the power supply. Uh, so we'll go into the back and I'll just unplug it and then we'll lay it down. I don't need to disconnect all the other stuff. Um, it's not really that crucial, but I'm going to dis just lay this down so we can get to this and take this out. So now it's laying down and with this type of uh, thing, we're going to turn these. So you should just turn them and there is arrows on it. So you turn them and then you pull it up. So we want to loosen them. I turn it and you should just pull it up. And this is how we're going to remove this CPU. Uh, I'm not going to disconnect the fan from it or the, the fan cabling because I'm going to reuse this, but I will have to A little tough with one hand but i will have to wipe all the thermal paste off i watched one miner that i follow on youtube when he did it he didn't even wipe off or clean up so he didn't wipe off or clean up any of the paste on the cpu he's put more on that's not something i'll do see how they pop up and then i should be able to just remove this you don't want to be like too forceful but it'll it'll come up So we're off the CPU now. Not a terrible job, not the best. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have, I'm actually gonna have to disconnect it. I wasn't going to, but I'm just gonna disconnect the fan and get that completely out of my way. And it should just give it a little wiggle, pulls right out. So we'll get this out of the way. I'll clean this up and we'll, I don't need to clean this up just yet, but you'll just push down on that, move it out of the way, and this will pop up. You just got to be careful. AMD has pins on the CPU, uh, AM and Intel has pins on the actual motherboard. So let me go get, I'm going to have to get some paper towels in a second, and you want to gently take this out, and there's all my pins. And you can see them all in there. They all look good. So there is little notches you'll see over here and there that on the you'll see them on the actual CPU. There's also a little arrow at the bottom left of it that you can see on here also. It just tells you that that's where that's going to go. So we're gonna just put this right in. And that is seated in there. You don't wanna move it too much. And then we're just gonna close this latch down onto it and make sure it gets underneath that. See, I pulled this back and got underneath of it. You, you wanna make sure that that's under it. And then we're just gonna push this down and go around and now we're, that CPU is seated in with the 7600K 7, in it. So so these I just wipe off with a paper towel. Sometimes I use rubbing alcohol also to really clean them up uh, and it doesn't hurt it. Rubbing alcohol evaporates pretty much fairly quickly. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of cleaning maybe off camera just to get two hands on it and really clean it up nice. But I like to get all the old stuff off so I get a good good seating and uh you know i know the thermal paste spreads nice and evenly then 
so we can get some proper cooling. But actually that's pretty clean as it is right there. And I'll just dust out the actual fan. Uh, it actually doesn't look too dusty, but I'll give it a quick dusting with my air compressor before I install just just to be safe. But it looks pretty, pretty clean for the most part. You must have had it in a pretty clean environment. And then we'll get the thermal paste onto the CPU and get it installed. Then we'll boot back up just to make sure it's reading it and working properly. So I'm gonna finish cleaning this off and then we'll install it onto the CPU. Got the cooler all cleaned up, dusted it out. So now I got my thermal paste and I use MX4 because one, it's really good in my opinion. Two, it's fairly inexpensive. You get four grams, which gets you a lot of applications out of one tube. So the method I use, I use the uh, pea size dot method. So we're just gonna squeeze some out and that's pretty much plenty for what we're gonna use. And I'll just set this off. That's the old CPU, I haven't cleaned it off yet. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put the cooler down on top of that. You could, it comes with a spreader, spread it out but I just don't see the point because uh, once we place the CPU down, it's going to spread that out. I actually might put just, because it's not fully centered, I might just put a tiny bit more to the left. Uh, if, it over, if it overruns just a tiny bit, it's not a big deal. Uh, I'd like it not to, but if it does for some reason, it's, it's non-conductive. And now we're just going to line the cooler up and put those pins right back into those little holes. Now, what we wanna do is when we get it lined up, we don't wanna move it too much. And it, this is a lot easier when I have two hands, but we just wanna make sure these arrows are spun in and we'll just push it down uh, once they're all in place. You just push them in uh, and they'll they'll just like clip in there So we'll get that installed and then once they're in you just like spin it. So let's get that installed all properly All right, so now that I got it pretty much see you want to kind of like hold the tabs up To seat it because there are bendable pins in it and then once they're in you can see that it's in you just push down on it and Then we just spin it and it, it locks it in place. We'll do each side separate and then you just spin it it should spin fairly easily when you have two hands on it so that one spun that one will spin and then this one in the back here spun in so that cooler isn't going anywhere i still got to spin this one so there we go it's spun and we got it spun. So now our entire cooler is in place and that isn't going anywhere. And then plug this back in. If you do not plug this back in, your PC will not boot and you'll be scratching your head why. So you always need a CPU fan plugged in into uh, the header there. Your CPU fan header always has to have something plugged in or else your PC will not boot because it'll think that there's no fan on it. So we're installed, everything's all good. So the last thing to do is I'm gonna pick it back up, put the glass casing on, and then I am going to boot it up and make sure everything's correct. Everything's back together, our board has power. We're gonna fire it up. Our fan, I just saw a tick, there it goes. Monitor's on, so we gotta get a post. So I'm gonna post boot right into the BIOS first. And then we're gonna check it in the BIOS and make sure it's good. So we're going in, I'm gonna get to the BIOS. Right now, it's, everything's looking good. So new CPU installed, please enter setup, F1. So far, so good. And we're in 7600K at 3.8 gigahertz. Uh, our profile's still good. Uh, Looks like our SSDs picked up. Everything's looking good right now. Now remember, I did say this is an H170 motherboard, so we won't be overclocking. 32C on the temperature looks good. So we're just gonna save and exit this, 
and booting the windows. And what we're gonna do is one final test is to check windows and make sure it's picking it up. But I really don't see an issue at this point. If the motherboard's picking it up, windows will pick it up. And this kid will have a pretty solid gaming PC on a pretty low budget. The fact that I got a 7600K a gaming PC built with a 1650 Super for as little as I did is pretty pretty impressive for a 10 year old kid. So Windows is booting up. I, I really don't see any issues at this point. I think we're gonna be solid PC. Uh, some, some drivers probably have to reinstall, but other than that, we should be in good shape. So we'll come into here, go to our properties. And there it is, 7600K at 3.8 gigahertz. So at, now you guys are seeing the screen flicker. Looks like some of my drivers are reinstalling. Uh, 7600K, we got it, 16 gigs of RAM, Windows 10 Pro. So there we go. We got our CPU installed and in good shape for our for this Christmas gift for this kid. So we're good to go. All my drives are being seen. So that's it for this video i mean that's how i updated this bios so we could accept a 7600k now i'm using a stock cooler because there's no overclocking that's going to be done on this but you know thanks for checking this video out make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button stay tuned for more videos